This is one of the most useful tools you can add to your shop. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to build your own mini benchtop router table. This thing has it all. It has a fence you can position anywhere you need to. You can add stop blocks to it. It has a place to store the fence when not using it. it has a little bit of bit storage. This is perfect for small parts, roundovers, small dados, rabbits, you name it. Let me show you how easy this is to build. Let's go. A couple of great things about this build is there's no T-track required because we're just using a fence that we can clamp anywhere we need to and you can change the bit from on top of this table. The first thing I'm gonna do is build a template. It's very simple so that I can recess this router plate. But if you don't wanna recess this and this feels like a little too much for you at this point or maybe it's above your skill level or you just don't feel comfortable doing it, you can certainly just use a piece of half inch plywood, take your router plate off, put it on top of your half inch plywood and then just mark those holes and drill those out. But I want this to have this router plate and recessed flush with the top of the router table. So for the frame, I'm just using this scrap plywood I've had in the shop for two years. I knew I would use it, so here it is. It comes in handy. That's why you keep stuff. Now I'm just gonna use the router plate itself to lay out this template and get the perfect fit. Now I'm just gonna mark the dimensions using that as a reference. And then I'm gonna cut those to size. Use the pocket holes here just to hold everything together. A face clamp's gonna be your best friend here just so that everything lays nice and flat. Now we're gonna make the interior part of this template and this is just a scrap piece of plywood again, the same thickness as my template around the outside. I'm gonna make this two inches shorter than the interior dimensions of my template. That's gonna give me a one inch clearance all the way around. That way this plate will have one inch to sit on all the way around, plus give me a little clearance in the middle. For the router tabletop, I'm just gonna use three quarter inch plywood and I've cut an 18 by 14 inch piece for my top. You can make your top however big you want, depending on your table, but I want this to be kind of a compact design. Next, I wanna center this, and for my purposes here, it should be about three and a sixteenth inch all the way around as being center. We do wanna make sure this is square. You're not making a clock. Is this close, it should be fine. Next thing we're gonna do is lay our template on top of there. I'm just gonna use some double stick tape to stick it in place. So to make this hole, I'm gonna use this pattern bit. I got this at uh, Amazon, I think, but it's a Rockler bit. Basically, it's made for patterns just like this. We're gonna set the router bit depth so that I'm cutting no more than 3 8 of an inch because our top plate is only 3 8 inch thick. If it's a little too deep, that's okay because you can always shim that up. You don't want it to be protruding up out of there. Protruding, it's a big word. Now to cut the center section out, all I'm gonna do is take a drill bit. I think this is a half inch drill bit. I'm just gonna drill in a couple of corners. Then I'm gonna take this jigsaw and cut out around what you see there, the center template. That should give us a nice hole for the router to set in from underneath. Now, I tried to get this as close as possible. So it is a really tight fit. And to loosen that up, I'm just gonna use a chisel or you can use sandpaper, whatever you got, just to open up that hole so that this fits down in there flush, just like that. Next thing I'm gonna do is cut out the sides of the router table. This I'm just using again, three quarter inch plywood. I'm gonna cut it 12 inches wide by 12 and a half inches tall. That's gonna give me a 14 inch overall height for the router table after we add the base and the top. Next thing I'm gonna do is mark out kind of a notch here just to give this a little definition and a way to clamp this down. It's also gonna reduce some weight. But I started out with a 30 degree angle and I thought that just didn't look just right. So I changed that up, went with 20 degree angle, measured in seven inches from the edge mark these lines and we're gonna cut these out. What I'm gonna do is double stick tape both of these together and try to cut them out at the same time, that way they match. I'm just gonna use the jigsaw again to cut this out. Next thing we're gonna do is assemble the frame. Now I'm just gonna use a corner clamp if you don't have any of these. These things are so handy to have. We're gonna put some wood glue on there, clamp this together. This is gonna make sure this is a perfect 90 degree angle and everything remains flush. And then we're just gonna countersink and drive some inch and a quarter screws through the side into the back. Now you can use pocket holes if you want, but I just went this route because it's easier, faster. Next thing we'll do is add some feet or a base to these. I've just cut some three inch strips. I'm gonna glue and screw those in just like that. I'm gonna offset them a little bit so I'll have more clamping surface on the outside edges. I wanted to add a little two inch strip here to the front just to give it some bracing so that these two pieces don't collapse or it just keeps everything nice and square. And it's gonna give me some support up front on the front of my router table. Now to add the top, I'm just gonna set it on here. We're gonna center this up left and right. Should have about two inches overhang on the sides, and just about two inches on the back. And the back overhang is important for a reason. So I wanna minimize how many holes we have in the top of this. So what I'm gonna do is lay it on the workbench here. I went ahead and drilled some pocket holes in this base. We're gonna pocket hole it from underneath. It, that way you don't see the screw holes and it still attaches to the top. Once I have everything lined up, we got our two inch overhang all the way around except for flush on the front. Just mark a line all the way around and what that's gonna do is let me have a reference to know where to put the glue line. 
I'm gonna use about two pocket holes per side and none on the front. I think I'm just gonna use glue up there. Just be careful and don't overdrive the screws because you don't want to punch through the top. Now this step is absolutely unnecessary, but I wanted to kind of give a contrasting color underneath the clear router plate. So I'm just going to tape this off and spray paint the inside black just because you don't have to do this. Now it's time to build the fence. I'm ripping a piece of plywood three inches wide and a piece that's going to be two and a quarter wide. And then we're going to cut those down to about 24 inches long. Next over to the miter saw, I'm going to take what's left over of the two and a quarter inch piece and I'm going to cut these into 45 degree blocks so that we'll have a right angle brace that goes behind the fence. Should be two and a quarter by two and a quarter. You'll also need a couple of square blocks, two and a quarter by two and a quarter. I'm going to drill a hole in the center of this fence. I measured up three quarters of an inch and this is going to be the center of this inch and three eighths Forster bit. Doesn't really matter what size you use, inch and a half, inch and a quarter, anywhere in that area. I'm just gonna get a square, line up the edge of that hole, make a mark on the both sides on both pieces, and we'll take a jigsaw and cut those out so that we kind of got a arched way there. You need to take some sandpaper and just kind of clean those up, straighten them up, whatever you need to do. So your two pieces should look something like this. It doesn't have to be exact, just close. This piece will lay flat on the workbench. This will go right behind it. We're gonna glue and brad nail those two together, and then we will square it up using uh, the blocks that we cut earlier. Just need to make sure these blocks are perfectly 90 degrees. If you're cutting small parts, be really careful, especially on a miter saw because they can cause kickbacks and injuries and all kinds of stuff. So I've got a million dollar stick or a $10 million stick that I hold them with, but I also built this little sled that I can make small parts like for this dust box. We got two like two and a quarter by two and a quarter blocks. They're really small. You wanna make sure that you got some really good support behind you when you cut these, if you're doing it at the miter saw. Now I'm using a Festool dust extractor, but whatever size dust collector you're using or shop vac, you'll need to measure that and drill the appropriate hole in the back here. For me, it's an inch and three eighths, works out perfect. Now I did put it on upside down to begin with, it was actually in the top, so, but I fixed that off camera. I did use an eighth inch roundover bit just to round over the outside edge of that hole so it doesn't tear up my hose. Now it's time to mount the plate in the router table. I bought this off of Etsy from Woodgrain Junkie. I purchased this myself. He has no idea that I'm making a video about this, but I thought this was the best solution for me and my setup. I'll link to these in the description if you want to check these out. I'm going to pre-drill the holes. I'm going to use some really tiny screws just to kind of hold this in place. I think gravity with the weight of your router is going to hold this in place more than anything. I am using just a regular screwdriver. Actually, it's a Wera. Pretty cool, a little ratchet screwdriver. Then we'll use this to tighten these screws in because you don't want to over tighten these and using a drill or a driver, you'll strip this out real easy. So I'm using 120 grit just to sand everything. I'm gonna knock all the rough edges off and any sharp corners, anything like that, I'm gonna round those over. This shouldn't take long at all. Before I sanded the fence, I went ahead and put a chamfer on the bottom side of that fence so that dust and stuff like that could kind of get in there without blocking the fence. Kind of a common practice on a lot of these homemade fences. If you don't have a chamfer bit yet, all you have to do is take your sander at about a 45 degree angle and just kind of knock that edge off. All right, so I messed up, it happens. <laughs> So I mounted these braces too close to the edge. I need to move them in. They are brad nailed and glued, so it's going to create kind of a mess. But if you're building this using the plans, all this is already fixed. It's a good thing about me trial and erroring it for you. So I'm just gonna move those in. We'll set them in at two and a half inches from each end. Now, if you do make a mistake and you have to remove brad nails, it's really not that big of a deal. You can take some, these are little snips, but you just grab the brad nail and twist and they come out. You just pull them straight through. All right, before we test this thing out, I am going to put a coat of Outlaws board butter all over this thing, and that's gonna help protect it and help things glide on there and all that good stuff. If you'd like to try this for your cutting boards or shop furniture, check us out, 731boardworks.com slash store, and that's where you can also grab the plans for this build. I decided I needed a place to keep the fence on this router table because if not, it'll get lost. So I went ahead and just made the little L brackets, put them in the bottom of the back, and then here's you see here, it'll hold the fence just perfectly fine. That way, it doesn't get lost. I told you to leave two inches on the backside for a specific purpose, and this is it. You'll be able to clamp that to your workbench and lower the height of that router table if you wanted to. Now, you will need to block up behind here 
so that it gives it a little more stability. Right now it would be a little shaky, but if you put some support blocks back here, it would work just perfect. If you want to cut dados or rabbits, it's really easy to do that because the fence can move anywhere you want it and clamp it down anywhere. That way you can just pick the perfect spot for you. Here I'm just going to route an eighth inch rabbit and an eighth inch dado just to show you it's possible. You can also set up stop blocks with just a common hand screw clamp or even a quick clamp if you wanted to and a scrap block of wood. That way you can move it anywhere on the fence that you so choose. Really easy to do that. If you don't need a fence in the way, it's easily storable with the clips we put on the back. The main thing I'm using this for, and what the main purpose of the build was, is so that I can use this for roundovers, especially on the small trays, like this router bit tray you see here, as well as round trays, guitar shaped trays, anything else we make here at 731. This will help speed up my process. And speaking of the router bit trays, we do have them available on the store. If you want to incorporate it into your build here, they fit perfectly between the two uprights. Happy coincidence. These are 12 and a half inches wide and it fits that space just perfect. And this will hold quarter inch, half inch bits, some wrenches, as well as a caliper and even a pencil. It actually goes with this build perfectly. And these trays are made out of solid walnut. They're about an inch thick, 12 and a half inches long, and just under six inches wide. Check out this mini workbench I built. Practically use it anywhere, especially for small shops or the safer crosscut sled. Clicking either one of those videos gets you the big old virtual fist bump.